If you haven't met me, quick introduction, I'm Fei Wu, and I actually spent more than a decade working in consulting and digital media as a project manager. So a lot of these tools come fairly naturally to me. But to be honest, YouTube isn't something that I used to do as part of my full-time job. So I think we're all trying to cope and understand the process necessary for this particular gig, right? Hey guys, this is Fei Wu, and I'm really excited to share a new development here at Face World. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we use Notion.so, or Notion, the project management app, which is database driven, to manage your YouTube content creation process. In other words, think of this tutorial as a way to better your YouTube content creation or a YouTube tracker for how you manage content creation between you and your team. Doesn't matter. The bigger the team is, the more complex things tend to get. You know, who's doing what, when, what's been done, published, or what's been recorded, or how do you even manage your ideas? So let's get started. Now, if you haven't heard of a notion.so, what's right here, and they have a pretty clean pricing information here on the website. If you're new to this, guess what? You're able to sign up for a uh, not just a free trial, but you can use this for free for an extended period of time. It's based on what's called a thousand block storage between you and unlimited members that could access this board. And you could also upload files um, with an upload limit of five megabytes. You can export the content as well. So I'm going to show you what I've been using, which is the free account to make it a little bit better. I think a team account of you know, unlimited members in this case, it's just Herman and me managing our YouTube content is again, very affordable. And I think reasonable once you see how we use it. If you haven't met me, quick introduction, I'm Fei Wu and I actually spent more than a decade working in consulting and digital media as a project manager. So a lot of these tools come fairly naturally to me, but to be honest, YouTube isn't something that I used to do as part of my full-time job. So I think we're all trying to cope and understand the process necessary for this particular gig, right? So uh, feel free to tweak what I'm putting forward, what I'm recommending, because you may be using YouTube or, or your totally different type of content creator, but I have a feeling that this general setup is going to suit you really well. And hopefully what this video will help you do is to reduce the amount of a uh, brain space, um, you know, when you get started. Because I know for a lot of you, the last thing you want to do is like, oh my God, learning another software, I had to figure out, figure out, or have to figure out all the columns and grids and, you know, the type of labels or tags I have to use. It's mind blowing. Let's take a look at my spreadsheet. And what I'm going to show you immediately after this is to show you step by step how you set this up in Notion. Now, to me, that's a money shot because when I was first introduced in Notion, I really struggled to, um, I love the video by the way, but I couldn't really find the step-by-step -step instructions to really use or get started with Notion. And, and I really didn't care all the templates that they have to offer because I just want to use it for YouTube. So check it out. Um, I'm fairly organized or to sometimes very organized, but not to a degree where I don't want to build a structure that I can not create any variations or sway from. I want this to be flexible so we can grow as a brand. Uh, flexible, but it still provides clarity um, to the people who work on this project. When you establish this spreadsheet, think about the minimum, again, the minimum amount of columns that will get you to where you need to be. Um, as you can see, if you are looking at this, which is essentially kind of a you know Excel spreadsheet, right? And I'll explain in a second why this is so much better than Excel spreadsheet is it looks pretty minimum. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, eight, nine, nine columns, not really a lot of information. But what you wanna do is every column serves an, a critical mission, absolutely critical. Isn't something that you can do elsewhere or you can manage it differently. Think of this as a dashboard, right? Like a billboard almost. Based on this single sheet, you're able to um, communicate with your team. People know exactly what they need to do. So there's a bit of a workflow 
um, that you need, you need to establish with people who use this. It can be something that you create design and just kind of throw it at your team, right? You need to explain, here's why I set it up this way. Do you agree? And maybe that's a great place for you to get some feedback as well. Now, what I always like to do is take advantage of this little white space here, which you can edit right away. I want to create the space for people to easily access the top four, five, six links that we use regularly. So here you can see I have the Face World YouTube channel. I have the YouTube Creator Studio. Um, when the link is ridiculously long, I use something called the tiny URL to kind of shorten it, right? So it doesn't kind of take over the entire real estate that you see here. I also have a Trello board where I keep my video ideas and I rank them. I will record a separate video on how I did that. Um, Finally, a content types and weekly uh, calendar. This is something, by the way, we used to use. So before we transition into Notion.so, and we can, you know, at some point probably just get rid of this. But in that transition period, it's really important for you to kind of list references and documents that you used to use. Now, let's take a look at um, basically, you know, what you see here. So. I call it all videos, but basically I'm able to uh, name this however I want to, right? Um, so here I call it all videos and it's a table view as opposed to a list view. So if I change to a list view, as you can see, that's what it is. Like the list of videos I've recorded, but it's not helpful. It doesn't have any properties that I'm looking for. So I'm going to change it back to um, table view. Now, I'll, again, I'll show you very quickly how to build this. The most important thing is that we need to use a single reference to quickly convey what we're talking about. So to me, as I've also watched many other YouTubers, experienced ones sharing their tip, is to use a number. It comes down to that. It's super simple. So instead of you trying to verbalize that video, get on the call. Hey, Herman, could you take a look at the how to use a repurpose.io to publish your video on YouTube? That's too long. <laughs> instead, I just say, hey, Herman, could you look at video number 13A? Right. And it's interesting. I know that a lot of people are not really into the 13 A, B and C. So I don't, as you can see, I don't really repeat a lot of numbers here. I use this 13 A, B, C, D, E. You don't really need all that many letters is when I create tutorials that are related and sort of similar. Um, so in this case, uh, so what I did is I created the video called repurpose.io to publish your podcast to YouTube. I just felt like it's something I want to publish soon. So even though I recorded the video later, I want to kind of escalate to an earlier uh, part of the queue. So I use, you know, A, B to kind of reprioritize within a defined queue position. That's all. So now let's talk about video type. Now I introduced this column actually a little bit later in my usage of Notion. I didn't really have that before. All I had was the name of the video and I try to be very concise and be real about these names, right? I don't want to use a name that's so temporary and I'm going to change later and all of a sudden I'm just out of sync between me and my video editor. So I try to use something that's informative. Like people look at the videos like, huh, okay, it's interesting and I know what it's about. But now the reason why I introduce video type is there are, it turns out, very different types of videos that we're recording. At the very minimum, as you can see, there are, you know, people are doing vlog, which is one type of video. And um, some people just doing sit down and no B-roll, no vlog style and just very quick, snappy videos. Some people are doing interviews like them and like another person on the video. So it's not about using these official labels, it's about using labels that make sense to you and your business. So for Phase World, uh, what I do is I have travel vlog, I have short interviews. So for you to see the whole list, I can simply click on the field. And the good news is Notion is a date is database driven. And therefore you're able to basically tag and assign as many types as you see needed. And but my word of, of advice is that maybe don't try to create a video that fits every category. You know, that that would be pretty crazy. And most likely that's that means the way that you categorize things, it's insufficient. So for us, I try to create the minimum, again, minimum amount of video types. Here I have travel vlog, I have short interview, I have sit down video, and you can see there's small and medium, I mean size. So some of the, the sit down videos uh, I have are really short, like five minutes or less, even two to three minutes. Some of the sit down videos, oh, by the way, the short ones are more reflection based. Like I might create a reflection video based on the audio podcast I just released. 
Now, there are also sit down uh, videos that are medium size. What I consider any anywhere between, you know, nine, 10 minutes all the way to about 20 minutes. Based on what I'm looking at the timestamp or kind of the length of this, I might have um, sit down videos that are large, uh, how to 20 minutes or more, very extensive details. Um, one of the videos that became really popular on this channel is, you know, how to start your affiliate marketing program. Uh, now I just skipped ahead. Um, now there's something called screen tutorial. This is partially a screen tutorial, even though it's longer, meaning I'm showing the screen. Sometimes I don't even show myself in the lower right hand corner here. Quick screen tutorials, how you do this, how you use the software, how you use this plugin. I love those things. And now in this little brown box, it's it's the unboxing videos. There's nothing new to explain on YouTube about what unboxing video is. I actually like to do those now. I recently purchased a uh, Zoom H6 recorder and I just purchased my new camera, which is a Sony mirrorless A6400. I love doing kind of those unboxing videos and I show the lenses and how I connect things together. Unboxing videos. Lastly, update of published videos. So it could be video about a video, reflection of a video. So we'll see how useful those things are. But as you can see, I'm using this column not only to indicate the types, but also give us hints of, you know, the categories we have. So from a dashboard perspective, I'm able to see, am I doing too much of this type of videos, but not enough of the other types of videos? Um, or, you know, later on, if I keep track of analytics, I can say, also learn and say that, look, my screen tutorials are really performing well. And guess what? Those are also lower in cost in terms of production time. And let's do more of those. So it's very helpful. And you know what I listed down here, row 21 to 25, these are only not only travel vlogs, but these are really large videos. Um, so additional information is I actually travel to China and record, recorded these videos in bits and pieces. So I don't really have my structure and style and create creative stuff. Uh, formalized yes so i know for a fact that these are going to be more difficult to kind of navigate and put together for editing purposes so you also see kind of the level of complexity based on the video types that i've indicated here now i'm gonna not skip over but just mention briefly the third column of course is the name uh, like i mentioned before i wanted to give them meaningful names short enough and scanning these names will give me ideas for how i want to design the thumbnails as well now Fourth column, very critical. It's called the status column. And when I click on it, you can see I try to, again, reduce the number of statuses available from um, ideation to recorded, to edited, to live. Everybody understand what those means. So now um, the fifth column is publish date. Whenever I click on it, you probably see a bunch of things. This is just property type related to what type of column it is so we, we don't need to worry about that and here this is just a date column so i talk about whenever something goes live i have to diligently come back and indicate uh, when it actually went live and these two columns column five and six kind of go hand in hand which is published date and published which is a checkbox which is a basically right it's yes or no why do i do that because i use published date to plan for when a piece of content should go live in my mind, and I'm sure for your brand, you know, like whether you pick days such as Wednesdays and Sundays to kind of go live with your video, but also you want to plan some of the days based on the type of video content, if you know what I mean, which is what I call like major content that was say for such as, you know, Wednesdays and Saturdays, but I also have more minor and quick videos and tutorials I want to release throughout the week. So when I come back, I want to make sure that the intended published date actually happened and sometimes as a small business you have to make these changes and shifts and you want to make sure that oh okay i actually published the video now almost done here we have an editor column here and this is a name column and you can add new name and they will automatically become this little label that you can use here so my editor herman and i are splitting our effort here i tend to give herman the more sophisticated videos to edit that requires more b-roll or me sitting in front of the camera because it's hard to edit yourself sitting in front of the camera all the time and i give myself things like the screen tutorials i can edit very quickly um, and release quickly as well so the the last two columns one is called script in google and the other is called comments um actually I'm going to show you quickly how to delete this 
a column because it's no longer needed. I explain in a second. Script in Google. So I, the question is, okay, Faye, do you prepare a script for these videos? Well, it really depends. I feel like there are things that I'm really comfortable talking about, such as, you know, how podcasting works and how freelance works. I've written these blog posts on phaseworld.com. So whenever I try to record a separate video, it's usually derived and inspired from the blog post, but it's never the same, obviously, word to word. Um, so I use the existing blog posts, especially the H1s, H2s, H3s as guidelines, but I still improv um, when I'm recording. Now, there are things I want to know. I want to make sure I get absolutely get it right. So I want to show you just briefly what those spreadsheets will look like. So for example, this is a script that I wrote for a particular video called how to get started with affiliate marketing. And not to really argue about the structure here, as you can see, it's pretty intense. Um, but the idea is that some video require extensive scripts. And I want to make sure that Herman has access to that easily. So, you know, even though most of the cells are empty, but the ones that are there, he will know to pay attention to those. And sometimes I even give him pointers on, you know, the B-roll, this B-roll goes here and the other goes there. You know, I will most likely do another tutorial on how I create a Google Doc for script scripting purposes. Now, that's it. Um, you can, as you can see, I mean, it's really easy to use. Now, I want to go back to the question about, hey, I want to leave a comment about a certain video, like me, for me to give instructions to Herman specific to, let's say, the podcast movement vlog. So this is where Notion really shines through because Notion is not just a spreadsheet, it's a database. So what it means is also it has database within a database within a database. When I open this, um, for example, this name, uh, open as a page. Now, everything you see here isn't just a static thing, a uh, field, but it, it's actually a database within itself. So this is an example where you open it up, you see all the information that we shared listed here. You can even add additional property, but here, you can see Feiwu, that's me, my icon. I can actually add a comment. I'll show you some basic here. So for example, I can list and tag someone and say, hey, I want to say something about this video and you can send and Herman will be able to get notified via his email. Um, so that is really helpful and that's why. A few minutes ago, I said why I deleted the column because we don't want uh, people to have to look elsewhere, especially comments it is a field where it's so relevant to a particular video or an issue or a question. And what you want, what you don't want to do is kind of have these extensive comments kind of mushed into a very small cell. That's what I was avoiding. So now you understand how I created this and all the functionalities within it. And you can even see speak of comments. You can see where the comments are. All right. I hope you find this video helpful, informative. Now, I'm going to include a link right now so you get to see how I create this spreadsheet completely from scratch, step by step. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It really supports me and, and help me understand that this is helpful. Give us a thumbs up. If you can, leave a comment with your questions and I'll see you in the next video.